Hello developers, if you clicked on this video then you're probably thinking of buying a Chromebook and you're wondering whether you can use it for your personal development or development in your work or college. Now in this video we're going to take a look if coding on a Chromebook is still viable and how it works. But if you do like this video then I'd really appreciate it if you drop me a like and if you enjoy the content then I'd love it if you can subscribe. So let's get into it. So first of all, we're going to look at the good stuff when it comes to Chromebooks. And there is a lot of good stuff. They are regularly updated. They have a four week update cycle. So there's a lot of new features always coming out for Chromebooks. And they have massively improved since the days of the first Chromebook. They absolutely work offline. If you need to do anything with specific software, then there's a lot more support out there now because everything's slowly moving to the web. So if you are primarily working in the browser, then there is a lot of things to be happy about because you've got stuff like Google Docs, you've got Microsoft Office, it all works in the cloud, AI agents, they all work in the cloud and it's all very well integrated. And then on top of that, you have things like your Google Play Store so that you can install Android apps and there's a lot of variety of things there that you can use for development. And also you have Linux as well in the back end, so you can install some software that works on Linux, which is very important for coding on your Chromebook. And there's also a lot of choice. So when it comes to buying a Chromebook, there are a lot of options to pick from. That is a good thing in terms of budgets. There's a lot of different devices for lots of different budgets that you may have, but also that might be a negative and we'll come on to that in a later point when we talk about some of that choice. Next, we're going to look at software support. So when it comes to software support on the Chromebook, there is quite a lot of software support out there. And in the main Chromebook website, you can actually see some of that. They talk about some of the things you can do, but what thing you'll notice is that nowhere does it mention coding so when you scroll through this website they talk about photo editing video editing document and editing taking notes design tool but nowhere does it talk about coding and that is interesting uh, and it's one thing to note when it comes to coding on a chromebook and because a lot of the stuff lives on the browser you can have some local apps it does limit you in terms of that support from developers. But on the Google Play Store, there are a lot of developer tools that you can use and some IDs that you can use, which do work great on a Chromebook. You can also install things like Android Studio for making Android apps. Um, you can install VS Code, which works on any operating system, including Linux, and therefore it would work. And things like Unity do seem to work. I have a video on how to install Unity on a Chromebook. So you can do some game development as well. But one thing to note is that with all of this, performance is super key and you won't get the same experience depending on the device you buy. As you can see, for example, when it comes to gaming on a Chromebook, they primarily talk about GeForce Now, which is a cloud streaming service for gaming and Android games. The, there aren't, if any, games that work natively on Chromebook. Uh, so that is something to note when it comes to software support. So most of your apps are going to come from Android or the web, and there are a handful of developer applications that will work on Linux on your Chromebook. So the bad stuff. And unfortunately, there's quite a few when it comes to coding on a Chromebook. The first thing is, as we mentioned before, there's a lot of choice in terms of devices you can buy. However, Google, what they do is they have this thing called Chromebook Plus, as you can see here. And Chromebook Plus is essentially a device that they're marketing as more powerful than the other Chromebooks. So you have some devices that say Chromebook Plus and some Chromebooks that just say Chromebook No Plus against them, which means that they're not classed as a high performing device. So because of Google's marketing, you might be inclined to think that buying a Chromebook Plus will result in a good experience. But if we look at some of these devices that say Chromebook Plus, for example, let's take this one at the bottom here that I found earlier. This one here, it says Chromebook Plus, and it comes with an Intel i3 and 305 processor. 
And if we have a look at this processor, we'll see that it's an entry level mobile CPU for thin and light laptops. And it was announced in early 2023. So that is over two years old, this processor. And that kind of brings me to the first bad point in Chromebooks, which is everything seems quite delayed. You'll never get the latest processor on a Chromebook. You won't get Chromebooks that come out with the new Intel processors, with the brand new AMD processors. They're always at least a year behind. So they'll use last gen's Intel processors, for example, the brand new Chromebooks. So when you're buying a Chromebook device, it is immediately out of date, which is quite annoying. The other thing is these Chromebooks that are marketed as plus, they're not really plus. If you buy this device, you're going to have a really bad experience coding on it. And I would not recommend it at all. And if you do want a device where you can code on it, then you're going to have to spend considerably much more money. Things like this Acer Spinbook here, which is more than double some of the other Chromebooks out there. So you definitely have to do your research if you want a Chromebook. And if you want a Chromebook, you, you need to do your research and find out which one's best for you and for your use case. But just note that some of these cheaper Chromebooks are definitely not gonna give you the same experience as some of the higher end Chromebooks. And I would not recommend the lower end Chromebooks at all. And the issue with the higher end Chromebooks are that you're already out of date in the hardware that you're buying. And in my opinion, they're quite expensive bits of hardware for what you're actually getting in them. The other thing to note is that in terms of market share, Chrome OS currently sits at 1.85% with Windows at 70% and OS X and Mac OS at about 15% and Linux at 4%, which is very telling in terms of where Chromebooks are right now. And the other interesting thing is that they did have a high period of Chromebooks around the pandemic. And so last year there were about 2.5% and right now they're at 1.8%. So they're, they're slowly coming down in popularity as well, which is interesting, but not, not necessarily that that's a bad thing, but you just need to know that in case the, the incentive for developers to make developer tools for these devices is going to be lower. So that is something to know. So my final thoughts and conclusion. Basically, I think Chromebooks are okay for coding. You can install things like VS Code and Android Studio, so you can make various different apps on mobile or on the web and things like microservices and things like that, you can definitely do. You can also get lots of different tools that Android can plug the gap for, things like database explorers or API explorer and other various API tools, things like Postman. You can find alternatives on um, the Android Play Store. You can also install some gaming development environments like Unity, but Honestly, the testing experience on Chrome OS with Unity is really bad. So other than just playing around with it and seeing it, I would not recommend actually making a game for production on a Chromebook. And there are some scenarios where coding on a Chromebook can work. So if you have a limited budget and you are in university, then Chromebooks can work. But as soon as you start making some apps uh, on the side for yourself, you start to have a job, do some freelancing, things like that, then you're probably going to struggle with Chromebook. And it's not for the reasons that you think. It's not for the limited offline support. I think that sometimes the media overemphasizes that. I think offline support on Chromebooks is actually pretty good. And you can achieve a lot of stuff online, offline on Chrome OS, which is really good. And you sometimes, um, the other thing that the media tends to emphasize is the support period. You get roughly eight years of support on a Chrome OS device. That's quite a lot of time. And sometimes it's portrayed as a bad thing, but if you look at things like Windows devices or Mac devices, they get around seven years of support, unless on Windows you can upgrade the specs so you can get more or years out of a single device if you upgrade certain specs. But again, you're spending money to upgrade that device. And on Mac, you don't have that choice. So you don't have that. But on Chromebook, you know exactly how long that device 
he's going to get in terms of support. And I actually think that support is quite long. Uh, eight years is quite a long time. So from those perspectives, I think Chromebooks are quite good. Where they fall short is in that performance. And they definitely don't have that performance. And I'm looking forward for Chromebooks to come out with ARM processors similar to the M series processors in Mac. Maybe that will be really good for Chrome OS because they'll get a lot more performance for similar price and not have to increase their price. But at the moment, if you want a good Chromebook device where you can make production ready uh, Android apps, make production ready websites, then you're going to need some sort of high end Chromebook. And even then, due to the limited software support, you're going to have a hard time, but it is possible if you persevere. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.